Hi, you're with Chandeep at Goodly once again, and in this video, I'm going to talk about how do you dynamically remove the empty columns, especially when you're trying to get the data from Excel. And once in a while, Excel will just show up some empty columns in your Power Query data. And let's just find out that if we can find a way for Power Query to identify those empty columns and remove them. Why don't we actually jump to Excel, take a look at the data, and solve this problem? All right, so I'm in an Excel file that contains a very simple data set, just three columns, name, age, and the company. Now, what you are not able to see is that I added a couple of columns ahead. I added this blank column with just a space bar here, which is actually going to cause a bit of problems when I load this data into Power Query by adding a couple of empty columns, which are before that. Now, let's just go take a look that if we just see this data in Power Query, how does the data look like? All right, so I'm in Power Query and you can see that I have loaded that data set, that Excel file into Power Query. And here is the data column, which is where I can take a look at the table. Now, if I click on the side of the table, I can see the preview of the data. Now, let's just take a look at the data here. We have the name, age, and the company, but alongside those three columns that I actually wanted, I also have a bunch of these uh, null columns, which are labeled as column four, column five, column six, and so on and so forth. Now, I don't really want these columns. Now, although I can load this this table I can promote the headers and I can get rid of all these columns here but these columns can show up as a different column index number I mean it could be column 17 column 12 column 11 the next time later and if you actually delete them by selecting on the column this will be hard coded and the next time a new column shows up it would not be deleted automatically so let's just find a way in power query so that power query is able to identify all these junk columns and then remove them all right, to be able to solve this problem, what I will try to do is I will try to get all the columns of this table that I have and then try to apply some filters on these columns and try to remove the columns which are not valid. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to make a new step and in that step, I want to pull all the columns of this particular table. So what I will do is first of all, combine all the tables that I have. So table.combine is the function that I'll be working with. And I'll say, hey, here is a source step. And in the source step, there is a column called data which contains one or multiple tables could be a possibility. And why don't you combine all the tables? So that's that and press enter and I get the full table right here. Now you can see that the headers are obviously not promoted and it has got a bunch of junk columns as well. So the first thing that I will do is I will promote the headers of this particular table. I can use a formula called table.promote headers and this actually promotes the header of all the columns which were actually in the first row. Now I don't really want to be able to work with the table. I actually want to work with the headers or the column names of this table and remove all the columns which are either starting with the word column or do not have anything or a space inside of them. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to wrap this formula around in a function called table.column names to be able to extract all the column names from this table that I have combined. Press enter and what I get to have is a list which contain all the column names of the table that I was actually working with. Let's just go rename this particular step as column names. Now what I'm going to do is since this is a list, I will apply a list filter function, which will be able to filter this list to the columns that I actually need. I'm just going to create a new step and start to work with this column names, which is already a list and apply a filter function so that I can filter this particular list. So I'm just going to create this FX right here, which is actually gives me a new step, uh, which is referring back to the previous step, which is nothing but column names. And I will work with the same list here and apply filters to this list to be able to filter only name, age, and company and get rid of all of these uh, junk columns, which are actually starting with the word column and which could also have a space. The formula that I'm going to use for that is going to be list.select. And list.select as the first part actually asks you for a list. Hey, which list are you trying to filter? So I'm just trying to filter the list. This list is actually nothing but the name of the previous step, which is column names. I provide the list name, then it says, uh, hey, what is your formula or condition by which you'd like to apply the filter? So I'm just going to say each each item of this list, that means the first row, the second row, the third row, the fourth row, why don't you just go and check each item and go check for the word, does it contain the word column or not? If it contains the word column, remove that. So I'm just going to write the function called text.contains and in text.contains, the first part is what are you trying to check? So I'm just trying to check the very word which is mentioned in the first row, the very word which is mentioned in the second row. That can be substituted by a variable called underscore. So I'm just going to say underscore means go check the very word in the row that you're currently working in. And I'm just going to move on to the next part. What is the substring that I'm trying to look at? I'm trying to look at a substring called column, right? So that's what I'm trying to look at. Close that bracket, close that bracket, commit to that, press enter. What I'm now going to get is 
all those names which had the word column inside of that. But hey, I'm just trying to do the reverse. I'm not trying to keep the items which contain the word column. I'm just trying to keep the items which do not contain the word column. So I can just easily reverse this logic by writing a not before that, that do the reverse of text.contains and it actually gives me name, age and company. Now there is still uh, like a space here, which as you can see that there is a space bar in one of the columns that I manually inserted. I also want to get rid of that. So I'm just going to maybe add conditions. So I'm just going to say add and add one more condition. And I'm just going to say that the very word, which is that you're checking, which is referred by an underscore should also not be equal to a space bar. So I can just write a space bar here. And if I commit to that, press enter and the space bar is also gone. Now there could be just like empties and nulls and blanks and things like that. I can also write multiple conditions to rule all of them out. So things like I can also write and the underscore, which is the very word that you're checking, uh, should not be equal to maybe like a blank. So nothing inside of the double quotes. I can close that bracket, press enter, and it doesn't do anything because we don't really have a blank. And I can also maybe write something like and underscore. I'm just trying to make my query foolproof not equal to the null here. Now you will write all the conditions that actually match your criteria of the things that you actually want to rule out and build the query and the conditions as per your thing. But this is what I want and this is good enough. What I'm going to do next is I'm just going to actually rename this particular step and I'm just going to call this as my filtered columns. Now these are the columns which I actually want to extract from the source from this particular data. So I just want name, age and company, which I have built in Power Query by some conditional logic that only go extract these particular columns. Now let's just create a new step. So I'm just gonna create the FX here. I'm just gonna go back to the source step here. And in the source step, this actually gives me the full table, which is where I can extract this particular table. So I can certainly write table.combine once again. And I'm just gonna say, hey, why don't you go to the source step and why don't you get the table called data? Close that bracket, press enter. I can certainly also promote the headers. So I can just say table.promote headers, close that bracket, press enter. And this is the same steps that we had done earlier. But what I want to do now is that this table which has been created in this table, I only want to keep certain number of columns, which are nothing but these columns which are there in the previous step. So I'm just going to apply a formula called table dot select columns. And it actually asks me as the first part is, hey, from which table should I select the columns? I'm going to say, hey, this is the table that I have made, which is where I have combined the tables, I've promoted the headers, and I can see the table in front of me. This is the table that you should actually pick up. From this table that you're picking up, why don't you keep only those columns which I have selected as filtered column in my previous step. You can see that the second part of the table dot select columns is a list. This is actually a list. So filtered column is a list. This is asking you for a list. It matches up. So it's going to be correct. So I'm just going to write filtered columns, close that bracket, press enter. And now what we get are the three columns that we actually wanted name, age, and the company. All right, let's just go test our solution before we actually end this video. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my Excel file and create a legit column and let's just see if this works or not. So I'm just going to come back here and I'm just going to maybe create a column called ABC and just write the value one all across the rows. Now we still have these two empty columns here that are going to be added and one blank column that is going to be added, but we definitely want that the ABC should be included in the data set that we have created in Power Query. So I'm just going to press Control S, go back to Power Query and here I'm just going to come to the home tab and hit a refresh. Let's just see do we get ABC. ABC. Yes, we did get it. So our solution is working absolutely fine. Now to be able to kind of make sense of this entire thing that we have done, there are just three main big ideas that I want you to retain and take it along with you. Number one, there's this formula that we have used, which is called table.column names that gives you the ability to extract all the names of the columns of the table that you're actually working with. Once you extract the names of the columns, you can actually apply a filter on the names of the columns and keep the names that you actually want to. So we use the function called list.select to be able to filter that list and apply conditions and keep only the relevant things that we actually needed. And then finally, we actually used uh, another formula called table.select columns to apply that filtered list onto the table that we are working with and keep only the columns that we actually needed. Now this can be worked out in various ways depending upon the data set that you have, but this was the general idea of how do you actually solve this particular problem. All right, in the end, a quick shout about my Power Query and DAX courses. If you're trying to build skills on Power Query, learn them right from scratch, even DAX, learn them right from scratch and come up to a level where you start solving more sophisticated, more challenging, more real-time problems of your own data. I will highly recommend that you take a look at my Power Query and my DAX courses. It's going to be highly beneficial. If you have any questions around this, please feel free to put them down in a comment and I'll be glad to reply.
Thanks so much for watching this and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye.